Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to start a new series on Gulp. Now, you maybe have never heard of Gulp, or maybe you've heard of Gulp and seen it get tossed around on blogs and stuff, and maybe not known what it's about, and maybe you know exactly what Gulp is about and just haven't taken the time to learn it yet. Well, this series is going to have all of you covered because I'm going to start the absolute very basics. I'm going to explain exactly what Gulp's doing and how we're doing it and why you want to use it. And we're going to take that and we're going to build it into some really advanced functionality. So really quick, what Gulp is, is it's a build system that allows you to do all sorts of things. Gulp, with one command, can do things like uh, searching your project for any images and compressing them. It can compress and concatenate uh, JavaScript files. It can compile your SAS code. It can do way more than that. It can even trigger a live reload in your browser. So at the heart of Gulp is what you're writing are various tasks. And then you can tell Gulp to run a task to go complete a task. Uh, and maybe that task runs several other tasks. Maybe it just runs one task and it's done. So maybe you say gulp, compress my images, and gulp goes and compresses all of your images. And maybe you just say gulp, and what it does is it compiles your SAS on save, it triggers live reload, and automatically compiles any new images you put into that folder. No matter what you're using Gulp for, there's one thing assured is that there's tons of flexibility and there's tons of great things you can do with it. So keep watching and we're going to write our very first Gulp file today. Okay, so here we have just a basic HTML app, and I'm going to use Gulp directly in this, but you don't need anything fancy. You can just go ahead and use Gulp within the directory of the project you're working on currently. Now the first thing we need to do is install Gulp globally. Now to do that, we can just do npm install hyphen g and then gulp. Now you need node installed on your computer for this to work. So if you have not installed node, go ahead and grab node.js from node.js.org and install it there and then the npm command will work for you. Now we just need npm install hyphen g gulp and that's going to install gulp on our entire system. So if you get errors like these, then you actually have to run this as a root or administrator so you can run sudo uh, npm install hyphen g gulp. Another way to do that is if you just typed npm install gulp and you got these errors, you can just simply type sudo space and then two exclamation points and that's going to fill in your previous command. And now hit enter, it'll ask for your password and now it's going to install gulp on my system. After Gulp is installed on your system, you then have to install it into your project. Okay, so now that I'm in the root directory for this project, keep in mind you're going to want to be in the root directory of your project. You're going to type npm install save dev gulp. Now if you had issues before with permissions, then you most likely will have them again. No worries, you can always just type sudo npm install save hyphen dev gulp. Uh, I would also try to just do npm install hyphen hyphen save dev gulp first and if that doesn't work then use sudo. Uh, so we can go ahead and hit enter here and that's going to install gulp directly into our local project. Okay, so after that you see this message here. It looks like everything installed correctly. Uh, if we come back to our project, you'll now see that we have a node modules folder and inside of it is a gulp folder and a dot bin folder. Cool. Well, we won't have to go into those, but they should exist if you ran that command successfully. Okay, so now let's actually create a gulp file. And what a gulp file is, is it's basically a set of instructions that tells gulp what you want it to do. So once we get into more complex things, you can write several tasks, such as compile, which might compile your SAS code. In this version, we're going to be writing a default task. And the default task is the task that runs when you just simply type gulp. So by right clicking on our folder in Sublime Text, I'm just going to create a new file at the root level of our uh, project. And this just simply needs to be named 
gulpfile.js. Now gulpfile.js is just a JavaScript file and gulp is going to look into this file to know what to do. So let's get started writing our gulp file from scratch. I mean, you could always copy a gulp file from another project, but gulp isn't one of those things that's too complex to know exactly how it's working. In fact, once you really dive into the code, it makes a ton of sense. So don't skip out and copy and paste. So actually go along and write your tasks yourself when you're starting. That way you can know exactly what you can do and write really customized gulp scripts. So let's go ahead and type var gulp and then gulp is going to be equal to and then we're going to require gulp. So this is where we're importing the gulp node package. By requiring gulp here, anytime we call gulp, it's going to go to the gulp node package. Okay, so next all we need is to use the task method. So we're going to say gulp.task. Now in parentheses, we're just going to type default. Now typically this is going to be your task name, such as if you were going to minify JavaScript or something, you could maybe have this task say minify, right? So that way you could at some point uh, command gulp minify and it would run that task. However, if you have default here, you don't need to type default when you run your gulp command, you can just type gulp. We'll see that in action in a second. Okay, so now we just need a callback here and we're just gonna be a function just like this. And inside of our function is the code that's going to be run when you run this gulp task. Now, since this is just a demo and we're just getting started by installing gulp, we're just going to do a console.log and then we're going to console log hello world with the classic example and make sure you finish it off with a semicolon there so your code should look just like this perfect check that out if uh, there's something weird go ahead and adjust it now we're going to run our gulp command now from in the root level of our project you can see that by uh, typing ls or um, you can see that we have the gulp file is right here. So now all I need to do is type gulp. That's it. Now let's hit enter. And we have our output. It's saying that it's using this gulp file that's located here. Uh, it started at the default task, the default task output hello world, and it finished after that with a time how long it took to finish. All right, now this is quite simply the easiest, most bare bones example you can give for a gulp file, and it doesn't really do anything useful. I can assure you that gulp does many things very usefully. So check out the next video where we set up our first gulp plugin and get going with some actual functionality building out our gulp file. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook or anywhere. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.